Hello and Merry Christmas, and if you don't celebrate Christmas, then I hope you're having a good day and happy holidays. But to celebrate the holidays and Christmas, because I do celebrate, I wanted to put something up that was ALO related, but I also wanted it to be something fun. I didn't want to talk about all the depressing and dark aspects of Ava, because you could do that forever. And I thought about it for a while, and I figured out what I was going to do. We are going to be talking about the 10th episode of Neon Genesis Evangelion, Magna Diver which Ava Monkey placed as the worst voted episode in Neon Genesis Evangelion in his video about the best and worst episodes in Evangelion, which I will link in the description box down below because it's a great video. The reason I want to discuss Magna Diver is that I disagree with a majority of the fan base that think Magna Diver is bad. While it does have its flaws, I thoroughly enjoy Magna Diver. In fact, I may be in the minority when I say this, but the action arc is probably Probably my favorite part of the show. I am of the opinion that the action arc gives everything else after it meaning. It makes everything else after it work. Because if we didn't have a reason to care about these characters and have a contrast to what they're like when they're happy and they're not happy, then the part where they're all super depressed wouldn't really work. But the action arc is something I'll talk about in another video in greater depth. Today, we're here to talk about Magna Diver. Now, right off the bat, there are some things in this episode that are downright amazing. First of all, we get some info on what the angel's life cycle is like, something we don't really get any more of in the show. We get hints to it, but we never get a full-on explanation, so it's really nice to get some insight into the angel. Another thing that is really good about this episode is this is where we get our first read hint of Kaji being an informant. Up until this point, we really didn't know much about Kaji. We knew him and Akka lived together for a period of time, and that Akka had a massive crush on him, and that he dated Misato when they were in college, and that him and Misato have had sex before, but there's not too much else. Like, we don't know really what his role and nerve was. We didn't know much about him. And this is where we start getting the hints that there's way more to him than we originally thought. And we were given our first hint, as I said, that he is an informant. Who he's an informant for, we do not know yet. We also get foreshadowing for the exploration of Asuka's backstory with her mother and her childhood at the end of the episode, which is really good. But most of the time, that's all people really say they like about it. And besides for those things, they say it's pretty bad. And while I will say the science used in the episode is questionable from the little bit of reading I did up on thermal expansion, and personally, I just don't think the science being off is a big deal. I just don't care. So that doesn't bother me. And some people are bothered by the fat suit gag. I really like it. I think it's a really funny gag. And while some people would say such a gag was out of place in Evangelion, I would like to point out that in one of the previous episodes, Asuka and Shinji used the power of music and dance to defeat an angel. The current part of the show we're in right now is very different from the rest of the series. Now just on to the thing that I like about this episode. First of all, all the stuff with Asuka and Shinji this episode is great, because it's easy to watch Evangelion and come away with the concept that Asuka hates Shinji, like vehemently hates him and would not care if he died. I recently saw a discussion on Ava Geeks of how characters would react to Shinji dying, and there were quite a few posts to talk about how they didn't think Asuka would care because she hates Shinji, and it's stuff like this episode that in my opinion vehemently contradicts Asuka's hatred of Shinji. Asuka and Shinji are actually pretty nice to each other in this episode. Yeah, Asuka calls him stupid a couple times and it's a little rude, but overall they're both pretty nice to each other. They get along really well. There's the scene by the pool where Asuka comes over and literally answers one of the questions on Shinji's homework for him and then asks him to read her the next question because she can't read the kanji. Yeah, Asuka confesses in this episode that there's something she can't do to Shinji, and Shinji helps her by reading the question to her, and then she explains thermal expansion to him. This is also where we learn the fact that Asuka graduated college already, 
which only adds to her ego and helps make her character in later episodes make more sense. It's just another thing to add on to the pile of reasons Asuka can tell people when she's explaining to them why Asuka Langley Suryu is the best person ever. Of course, then Asuka uses her breasts as an example of thermal expansion and subtly flirts with Shinji, reinforcing the fact that Asuka does indeed like Shinji, otherwise why would she be flirting with him? But then, of course, Shinji starts shutting her away because he starts getting nervous and uncomfortable, and it ends abruptly with Asuka calling him boring and walking away, annoyed that Shinji basically told her off, I'm not interested in any of that stuff. But on to another thing I love about this episode is that we get to see an Evangelion fight submerged in lava. Besides for this, at least in the original theory, we don't really ever again get to see an Ava fight on anything other than just the regular terrain of the ground. The only other time we see anything similar to an Aba fighting on a different type of terrain would be in episode 8 when Asuka appeared and then used the ship to like hopscotch around. But with that exception, all we ever see is the Aba standing on the ground fighting in the city of Tokyo 3. So this was a nice change of pace from the rest of the fights in the series. It was just something different. And Aiden Gillian isn't about the action or the fight, but it is nice to just see something different for the action him part of an episode for one. Of course, then there's the part that a lot of people talk about when discussing this episode, which is the fact that Shinji saves Asuka at the end of the episode. He rushes into the volcano without the D-type equipment and rushes to grab Asuka using Evangelion Unit 1. But Shinji saving somebody while in Evangelion Unit 1 isn't entirely out of the norm. He had saved the people while in Unit 1 before. But what's different about this is that this is Asuka, and Asuka doesn't seem upset about it, which is something that I find incredibly fascinating, and I'm probably going to stay discussing that in detail for if I ever do a video on Asuka's character or that aspect of her character, but what I found incredibly interesting was that she wasn't upset about it. She wasn't upset to be changed by Shinji. In fact, we see her smile very gratefully and just call him dumb for trying something so dangerous, but she seems actually generally flattered that he would put his life on the line for her, which is really weird. I wouldn't say it's out of character, I would just say it's unexpected based on her actions later in the series, especially when Shinji starts doing better as an Ava pilot. The reason I like this episode so much is that it's a lot of fun, and we get to see a side to the character that we only get to see a few times in the theory in a couple of episodes. There aren't many episodes where we get to see this happy, non-depressed version of the character. I will say on a surface level, the fact that Miss Sato takes Asuka and Shinji to a hot spring so they can relax and kind of have a semi-vacation is nice and it helps give the relationship between all three of the characters more weight later on. I will admit the arrest Jin and Asuka and Miss Sato just touching each other jokes aren't funny, like, they're, they're not funny and they feel really out of place, I didn't love that, but maybe that's just me, that's really one of the only things I vehemently dislike about this episode, I feel like that joke there is really out of place, and then after that scene, we get the really nice scene of Asuka and Misato talking, and the allusion to Asuka past for the first time, but overall, I just really like Magma Diver, I think it's a fun, silly episode that I just like watching. And yes, I know this video isn't nearly as analytical or in-depth as the rest of my Evangelion videos, but it is Christmas and I kind of just wanted to do something Ava related that was fun. But don't worry, there'll be another Evangelion video coming out on December 31st that I think you guys will all enjoy. So if you're an Evangelion fan and you're new to the channel, definitely subscribe to check out that video in a couple of days. If you liked the video, leave it a like, and tell me whether or not you like a Magma Diver in the comments section down below, and what you think of my reasoning for saying I think it's a good episode. Well, above all else, guys, I hope you have a great day, and to those who do celebrate it, Merry Christmas.